Today we're gonna take a super forward bright bass like this. And in context. And we're gonna push it into place using a reverb, sounds like this. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So this is still under construction a bit, and this is the perfect plate reverb. So there's already a bunch of reviews and things out there on this thing. So I figured it'd be more interesting and just informative to see it in a use case. So I've got this bass sound here. I've been working on sort of stitching together a track. Started out jazzy, and then I went down this really bright, aggressive bass sort of a thing. And... What wound up happening was I had moments that I definitely wanted to be brighter moments. Moments where the bass was just super forward. But then I had these other moments where these little phrases happened. And these to me, so I, I began to get a picture as I wrote this. I got a picture of like a monster in a cave. And the, the big bright moments are when he comes out. But then he goes back into the cave and you hear him like rummaging around in the cave or something. That's sort of this thing that started going on in my head. And during these moments, I want them to sit back. I don't want them to be so forward. It's like the monsters in the cave. And then we have these moments where it really comes out and sort of shows its teeth. So how do I set something like this up? And why perfect plate specifically? Uh, well, Denise Audio has a bunch of extra things they toss into their verbs that is always uh, pretty interesting. So you'll notice along the top here, if you click on any of these, you get all these extra controls. And these are to the reverb. So the reverb, you can have a super aggressive reverb in that the distortion is literally built into the reverb, which is really, really rare. <laughs> you don't normally see a distortion built into a reverb. So I decided to take advantage of a couple of these things and turn the reverb into sort of a color knob. So I just automate the mix. It's gonna bring in this, you know, sound. And I'm gonna use this sound to create an aggressive reverb, but one that also pushes back because reverbs are great at blurring things out, right? So during these moments where these little phrases happen, I simply automate the mix knob up and down, like right here and right here, and it pushes those phrases to where I'd want them to be. Again, if I don't I have it on, it's just on top the whole time, this is with it on. And these, uh, what's another nice thing is this also gives a much bigger impression because you get a lot of stereo uh, effect because you've got a reverb on there. Now we could do a mono verb. That would be if we kept it mono versus wide. So that's one of the first things that really helps it sound big. But then we've also got this drive control. So if we were to solo this jazz and turn the drive off, let's just toggle it off. This is what it would sound like. And this is what it sounds like with this on. So you'll notice that the verb is a lot more pushed, uh, or I should say like, it's, a, it's a shorter verb all of a sudden, despite the tail being longer. Again, if we were to turn the drive off, it rings quite a bit more versus with the drive on. So that was an interesting side effect, one that I actually didn't expect. So pretty cool use for the drive. Uh, we've also got rotate, which is gonna cause some stereo imaging, uh, some additional stereo imaging. These over here don't play so big a role. The big, the big takeaways for this is I've got a drive, and then if you click it again, it'll take you back to the main screen. And I've got a tail, um, not a super long tail. And just by these two things combined, I get pretty much what I want. We've also got some additional stuff in here that I have some other sounds that take a better advantage of this. But essentially, that's the use case here. You write out a bass line. Now, mine's all one bass. You could have a bunch of different basses, and I just have it 
mixed in so these moments where it comes up are where I'd like the sound to be a little blurred out, but not necessarily completely out of it. So like for example over here, we have a, another growl and it comes up and down a little bit so it gives a sense of space versus without it. Like, yeah, that's a big difference. And over here, versus so pretty nice of course anything that's totally dry right you're gonna be like well of course there's a big difference uh, let's look at some other sounds here so i've got another sound in here specifically i've got the piano sound sounds like this with it so it's just keeping a backbeat going for us if i were to bring in like some drums This is what it sounded like before without it. That was it. So here on this particular example, I am taking advantage of several of the things. First, we've got the EQ, which is just removing a lot of low end, boosting the highs. And we are using the rotate a little bit, detune a little bit. Uh, we could push detune a lot harder. It doesn't really work with what I wound up doing. But you can get that old timey feel if you want. You can dial in the wow and speed and shake and whatnot. Uh, but again, making heavy use of the drive along with the EQ to get sort of a more aggressive reverb sound. And it's, it's really that easy. You just pop it on and you dial it in. Uh, went for a shorter reverb, ironically, than the bass did. But nothing here is automated. It's all just sort of as is. Another fun thing you could try with this that I was sort of experimenting with is they have this... Um, this resonator control down here and you can uh well let's just check it out so here's the resonator we'll just dial it up all the way and you've got these different gain controls for each one but essentially we could give let's give resonator to 86 percent that I was fiddling with it here to try and mess with the chord. So I had it set to C5, E, and then E, and then sort of dialed it in as needed. But I wound up taking it so far off that it's not doing a whole lot. If you listen now, you can hear the note, that high note pop through. If I were to take this off. And part of that is also the drive. The drive also adds some of that sort of high end ring to this. We remove this. That makes it a little more clear. If we take them both off. So this move again, not the biggest move in this case, but you can dial it in to get some really wonky sounding effects. Uh, that can be really cool. Other bass cases that we have in here, we've got it on a bassoon and bass clarinet. And so again, different EQ curves applied, a little bit of rotate, again, went heavy with the drive. Pretty much everything, I just found it so funny that it has a drive inside a reverb. And so decided to just take it for everything that it's worth. Now, if we were to bypass these and just hear them dry, Bassoon in particular, or oh, that's the bass clarinet. So there's the bass clarinet. There's the bassoon. Really just rings out quite a bit more. Now, of course, this one has a longer tail. So combining these, this sort of gives me the front of the attack. And then I have a second instrument with a slightly longer verb that gives me sort of the, the tone of the tail, which is another way you could combine some verbs. So I've got these clarinets here as well, and i just like to use them to really quick show the rotate because the rotate has tremolo, and tremolo is always a cool thing to sort of have. If you're into future bass, you'll be familiar with this sort of a concept. But uh, basically, we can bring the rotate up, and it's controlled by the sine wave. In this case, we could choose this shape. It doesn't have to be a sine wave, but it's a sine wave right now. We can take it to like 1 16th and bring the tremolo up, and you're going to wind up getting this like... Uh, let me just show you. 
Yeah. Okay, so now if we let's take the vibrato off this and bring the filter way up. And the pan up as well. And you can get some really cool sort of um, stereo effects this way. Vibrato can get out of hand real quickly if you're not careful. So, you, of course, if we're going to do that, you might go for a slower time. In this case, we're playing such short notes, vibrato would be just a bad idea. But tremolo is an interesting thing to toss on. And so you could have this like baked into your verb, which is a really interesting concept, especially if you were to automate some of this stuff, could lead to some really cool um, effects. So that is perfect play in a bunch of different use cases you can use it in, as well as just some in general reverb techniques. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.